Okay, let's uh, talk about our conditional breakpoints and uh, pausing the uh, the processor. Um, before our breakpoints, um, we just went through and we continued our execution. Uh, when the breakpoint was hit, there uh, there was no condition set. It just whenever it encountered that breakpoint, it printed a message out and it continued execution. Well, what happens if we uh, remove that check mark and we don't want to continue execution? We just click OK. Nothing's changed yet. We still have to recompile. Let's show you this just to, to prove a point here. Um, click recompile. And it just takes a second here. And the watch window will pop back open. And you can see, well, what's going on? Everything, we're still getting hit. Uh, the code still works. I can change the pot and the voltage just changed like they should. And it doesn't look like it holds with me. Well, what had happened was there's a safety valve that's built into this so it doesn't get, uh, when you set that breakpoint, that uh, check box doesn't get accidentally unchecked. There's a little safety valve. And it's located in your project properties. It's down here under the enable breakpoint pause. Uh, but by default in your properties, uh, project properties, it's going to be uh, set to false. So we just turn that baby on to true. And it warns you, it says switching this on will cause the microcontroller to halt when the breakpoint's reached. And depending on your application, this could be dangerous. Uh, say, so the, yeah, we're aware of that. And uh, obviously, you wouldn't want to set a breakpoint in an interrupt routine or something like that. Um, even if you could, <laughs> I'm not sure if you can. I, don't, I, I have never really tried one before. But um, if you were in a different module or anything that you would want to stop the process of your code to take a look at the variables is very helpful. So anyway, we have that property set to true now, so the processor is going to halt when it runs into this breakpoint. And just to prove that, I see, you can see that I still have the continue execution. So I'm going to go ahead and recompile. Remember, we have to recompile for that to become uh, effective. And it should come through there after recompiles and hit that breakpoint and stop. And it sure did. See, the code is dead. I'm moving the potentiometers. Nothing's changing. Got hit once. And if you look down here in the output window, it says that the read analog voltage is paused at the source file, line 21, where we have our breakpoint. And uh, it worked. So let's go ahead and set that back around. Because like I said, this is uh, having that uh, a breakpoint in your main loop is pretty ridiculous. I mean, that thing gets hit, you know, a million times a second, and you spend all day just pressing uh, continue. So let's go ahead and change that back to where we're going to continue our execution. We'll click OK. Then we're going to have to hit continue a couple times here to get things uh, going again. We need to recompile it. Okay, there we go. Now I got my rebuild. Okay, so you can see what a what a pain that is. And I did away with that breakpoint, so there's nothing to watch in our debug window. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, set something up here to be a little bit useful and, and show you the the power that this has. That's a uh, create a new variable. Let's call it count. Always initialize your variables. Golden rule process of programming. Uh, then we'll just go through down here and we'll just increment the variable. How about that? That's simple enough. And let's set this one back up. So one hit. We're just going to print a message. We're going to continue execution. We're going to print out our sensor value. ADC curly brace. Oh, and then we'll do our voltage.
And then we'll just do count. Okay, great. Now we'll just come down here and we'll set a conditional breakpoint. We'll come down here and we'll hit condition. And we'll set the condition so that uh, when count is equal to 100, we're going to we're going to activate the breakpoint. And in this condition, you can use any evaluation you want. Just be careful. I I, I keep forgetting to use the equal sign. You have to use two equal signs in an evaluation. Otherwise, if you just use one, you're assigned count equal to 100, and obviously that's not going to work. That's not going to stop anything. It's going to be ridiculous, but you can use ORs and ANDs and exclusive ORs, whatever whatever you want to to do with the that to uh, come up with a some kind of condition. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click OK here, and then also right click on that. And when that condition is met, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, we'll just type a message, something pretty, I guess. Let's so see, 100. print that out and then we'll check the stop we'll pause the processor and since this is only set once when the count is equal to 100 we're uh, it'll only hit once so we'll be able to hit continue after this uh, breakpoint is hit and continue processing uh, you know so if we were in a in a different uh, function in a different file you know, we could actually stop the processing of the, the CPU, jump to that subroutine, and take a look at our variables and see what's going on if there was a bug in the, one of the global variables or something. So let's go ahead and we'll hit compile. We're going to start debugging. And there's our count variable. And once it hits, well, it's not going to hit 100 because we're printing it out here. So it would be 99, right? So count actually got hit 100 times, but we only printed it uh, at 99 because it didn't increment until it hit 100. And once it hit 100, it broke. So down here in our uh, micro debug message, we see the, the message was printed here. It's 100. And then uh, it tells you where it was paused at, line 24. So. That worked real good. And we should be able to just go right back up into our debug and hit continue or press F5. And the code can, should continue uh, processing like it should. And I can move my potentiometer. And it all works just great. So um, you see that's a very, very useful uh, little tool there. Uh, and I think we'll look at that next. Is, uh, we'll uh, add a, another source file to our project. Um, and we'll call it, we'll write a function in that source file, and we'll call it from our main loop, and we'll set a, a conditional breakpoint inside of it. Okay.